The Passage is a horror fiction novel published in 2010 by the American author Justin Cronin. It is the first book of a trilogy that includes 2012's The Twelve and 2016 City of Mirrors. Taking place in the near future, The Passage describes a post-apocalyptic world ravaged by vampire-like creatures who were originally infected as part of a U.S. government research project. In 2019, Cronin's trilogy was adapted into a television series on Fox. The first part of the book takes place in the very near future. In Colorado, the United States is leading a top-secret research initiative, called Project NOAA, designed to create super-soldiers with prolonged life. To do this, the researchers inject death row inmates with a Bolivian bat virus that results in increased immune systems and strength, but also uncontrollable violent outbursts. In addition to patient zero, Tim Fanning, the virus has been administered to a group of 12 inmates known as the 12. Despite all their research, the project scientists struggle to prevent the subjects from behaving in unpredictably violent ways. Dr. Lear, the head scientist, hypothesizes that the violent outbursts may be eliminated if they inject the virus into a child whose immune system is still developing. A conflicted FBI agent named Brad Wolgast is tasked with retrieving a six-year-old child named Amy Belafonte from a convent who will be used to test a newly refined version of the virus serum. Dr. Lear's hypothesis is proven correct, and Amy Belafonte doesn't appear to suffer any of the negative violent effects of the virus. Meanwhile, the other 12 infected test subjects, along with Manning, are growing increasingly powerful. One inmate, a particularly vicious killer named Babcock, has even developed psychic abilities. He uses the psychic abilities to allow all of the inmates to escape from the research facility. In the process, they kill many researchers, soldiers, and FBI agents who stand in their way. Wolgast manages to protect Amy during the chaos, and the two retreat to a haven in the mountains where they survive on their own together. As the two eke out a stable but difficult existence, they receive sporadic reports on the radio about a contagion spreading all over the world. One day, Amy and Wolgast witness a nuclear explosion some miles away. Wolgast infers that the explosions are planned by governments to wipe out irredeemably infected areas. Whatever the case, Wolgast eventually dies of radiation poisoning from the fallout. The second part of the book takes place 93 years after the first part. After all this time, Amy has only aged a few years and looks like a young teenager. Amy arrives at a walled-off colony set up for survivors by FEMA in the wake of the initial outbreak. But the colony is running low on supplies and electricity, which is needed to power the big lights they use to repel the vampiric-infected creatures that attack regularly, who are known as virals. A technician there receives occasional, faint radio signals from what the survivors hope is another colony in Colorado. In the wake of the latest attack, which results in multiple deaths, and with the arrival of Babcock in the area whose psychic interventions are causing people to behave erratically a number of colony members set out with Amy to find the source of the radio signal. While traveling, the group comes across a Las Vegas prison known as the Haven. At first, it appears to be a refuge for humans, but soon Amy learns that it is actually Babcock's lair. The humans are scared into submission by Babcock who guarantees their safety as long as they deliver him fresh blood to devour. Amy and her cohorts free Theo Jackson, the brother of Peter Jackson who they are traveling with, and manage to flee to the Colorado outpost that's sending out radio signals. That outpost turns out to be the same research facility where Amy and the Twelve were kept. The woman now running the facility is Sister Lacey, a nun who accompanied Amy to the facility from the convent and who was infected with the same refined serum as Amy which is why she's still alive, but not ultra-violent. Amy and Sister Lacey concoct a plan to lure Babcock to the facility where they will destroy him using a nuclear device left behind as a fail-safe in case the virus got out of the facility's quarantine area. Their theory is that by destroying Babcock, they will also destroy all the vampires or virals that he turned. Using her psychic abilities, Amy is able to successfully lead Babcock to a room deep underground in the facility where Sister Lacey sets off the device, killing herself and Babcock. Amy's theory proves to be correct, hordes of virals dissolve into dust the moment Babcock expires. The book ends on an ambiguous note, as the survivors make their way to Roswell, New Mexico, and a reference document dated a thousand years in the future makes vague reference to the Roswell Massacre.
The passage is an epic, apocalyptic horror story that, according to many critics and even Stephen King himself, is a worthy spiritual successor to King's landmark novel, The Stand. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.